translates in this case to very fast. So what do we got? Well, everything is up other than the weight. Intensity up, braking up, <laughs> and definitely drama. Way, way up. First of all, what's it all about? We've got heavily revised engine internal components. Revised with a lot of titanium. It's taking this car up 20 horsepower from the standard SV, if you can call an SV standard. We're now up to 760 brake horsepower, and we're up another over 20 pounds feet of torque over the standard SV. Ooh, taking us to 531 pounds feet of torque, which puts us down this straight at over 275 kilometers an hour. Now the brakes are the same off the SV. I have to say the pedal feel, I would probably hazard a guess that despite the fact that this thing just set a record breaking Nürburgring lap time, I've got to say the pedal feel was probably <laughs> a little bit stronger around that Nürburgring lap, lap time. This feels quite road bias in the, the way that it feels. You're not getting sponge as such, but there is a, like, a feeling of long travel that I think is set up for road use. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, first of all, you'll have heard me say that quite a lot, but no doubt you're waiting for the gearbox comment. Well, in this environment, on the track, when you're flat shifting, it's fantastic. But, the issue comes, see right there? I gotta say, look, for all of my comments about how dual clutch gearboxes are fantastic, when you're flat shifting, there really is, every gear is a theatrical moment, it's its own scene. The problem is the interlude between actually initiating that gear shift when you're going slower, watch this, <laughs> it actually rotated the car then under gear shifting because unless you're flat shifting above 6,000 RPM, you don't get that shotgun-like slamming home gear shift effect. There is this lull, which when this gearbox launched back in 2011,
is actually a wonderful feeling, but let me just slow down so I can talk to you a bit more. I've got a feeling that on the road, at this sort of speed, there's a technique in these gearboxes where if you have a slight lift, it just smooths everything out and the gear shift actually is more than acceptable. And I guess the pros and cons are that if you're not quite fully on it, you are very much aware in this era of wonderfully responsive, dynamic and agile twin clutch boxes, that they are, we are at the very edge of the last generation of gearbox with this car. But I've got to say, as far as single clutch gearboxes goes, they've absolutely nailed it. And do you know what? I'd actually consider this car. <laughs> In the past, Aventadors have evaded my garage mostly because of the gearbox. Now, living with these things is interesting because the visibility, one of the uh, I guess compromises of a car that looks this good. If you look at the side of the Aventador profile, it has a very tight window line. And that's because the A-pillar rakes very steeply and it makes the aesthetic look fantastic. The offset of this is where the A-pillar meets the bodywork, you're kind of constantly ducking around it to see where your corner is or on the road where any oncoming traffic is. The visibility in this car has been made, dare I say it, even worse by the addition of the magnificent aesthetic of the rear cowling over the engine bay. Now from the outside it looks wonderful. I'm actually following an identical spec to SVJ right now and it's one of the best looking road cars in the world. From a, now I know these cars aren't practical cars, but from an ounce of practicality it's kind of been stripped out of this thing by removing pretty much all visibility out of the rear here. But you kind of don't care when you're driving it you just don't care now one of the things that i've chosen to talk about while i'm going steady is the introduction of the generation 2 of ala which is lamborghini's active aerodynamics now we first saw the gen 1 of this launch on the hurricane performante and what it does in this car is very cleverly channels air under and around the car and through a series of active aero there's these flaps essentially on the front and rear of the car which shuts off aero on each side of the car channeling downforce to wherever the car needs it now this particularly comes into play uh, when you're taking a corner the downforce is channeled to the inside of the car basically applying more downforce on the inside wheel giving you more grip and then when you're on that incredibly long straight and we were pulling 275 kilometers an hour it effectively stalls the wing, reducing drag, giving you cleaner cut through the air. And as a result, as you've seen, by God, does this thing cut through the air. This thing's up to 531 pounds feet now, but it's connected to a naturally aspirated V12 with those titanium reworked internals. As you've heard, it truly sounds like a, a race car. When you stand on the pit wall here and you hear the cars going past, it sounds like some race cars are warming up for the race. It's an amazing experience. I've got to say, it does feel like we are at the very edge, as far as you can push, previous generation technology in this car. Despite the fact that we are actuating the gears with paddles, it does feel a bit more of an old school interaction. But the way it delivers it, look, supercars aren't always about practicality. They're not always about efficiency. They're all about having a good time. I often say that, you know, we don't need any of these things, but we want them all. And the want and desire for a car like this has just gone through the roof. It's not the last word in dynamics, and I would say that on the road, it's maybe be more enjoyable, because out here, you are able to take this thing to the edge of physics, and then its weight and size starts to play around. But I would imagine on the road, particularly with the rear wheel steer, this thing is gonna be fantastic. So the Huracan Performante is without doubt their most agile and dynamic car, mostly because of its size, weight, and of course, its twin clutch gearbox. But in terms of sheer excitement, I think they've absolutely nailed it. Now, where they'll go with this next, where they'll take the gearbox next, will we see a hybrid drivetrain? 
with the replacement of Ventanil, chances are we will, making this car very significant because it might just be the last truly naturally aspirated V12 that comes out of Santa Agata. So on that note, let's see where it goes. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.